morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here on this Monday morning. Our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at 767-5500 right there on Baldwin Road and Highway 77. Principal Mike Heppenstall and a very able-bodied staff there to take care of you. Uh, the word on weather, warmer. I know you don't want to hear that, but it's going to be warmer this week, about a 10% chance of rain. Not a lot going on. I looked at two fronts. We're sort of sitting in between two little, but they're very small fronts and uh, sort of sucking up some of that uh, moisture off the Gulf, but it's not. It's going on past us, so we're not getting any, any moisture at all. High today, uh, should we get up close to 90 here, and it will be in the 90s inland. Low tonight, 72, and water temperature is 83. Right now, in Panama City is 72, and Mariana 74, and Apalachicola is 75, and over in San Destin is 79 degrees. So uh, let's just look forward, for, you know, just make, uh, make your plans for just warmer week. It's not going to be extremely hot, just going to be sort of uncomfortably warm. Our boating forecast went <clears throat> out of the south and then southwest at 5 to 12, seas 1 to 3, and a light shop on protected waters. The river readings. Take a look at the Appalachian Coast Bluntstown. It is reading a point three flat line at a point three. The Choctahatchee at Caraville. Now we did have a little bit of action there. We had a we have a one point four and it's dropping off slowly today and tomorrow, getting back down uh, below one foot by the middle of the week. So we do have a slightly dropping uh, water on the Choctahatchee River. So be aware of that. We did have a little bump in it over the weekend, which was nice to get that. All right, we'll take uh, our Carl Vernon Marine Services tide chart brought to us by Carl Vernon Marine Services. Looking today, September the 26th, we have what we call uh, the neap tides. We have about four tides here, not a lot of tidal flow, but we're looking on toward Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It's going to be some strong tides for the weekend. Okay, Carl can do anything on the, on the water there as far as uh, building you a boat dock or, or or any kind of a service like a seawall, whatever, he can take care of it. Now, every Monday, we like to call Panama City Beach Pier, <coughs> talk to Carrie, and get a beach pier report. That's brought to us by Bug Away Pest Control with Rick Russell there. And uh, good morning, Carrie. Good morning. What's going on out of Panama City Beach Pier? Well, the coffee's hot. <laughs> That's good. Uh, they, could, they called one king yesterday. It slowed way back down. But we had a fairly decent weekend. You know, had that contest. I know they didn't tell you about it, but well, this is, this you're is, not I, big I was, on Dan Rose's list there. You're uh, kind of way on the bottom. So well, let me, let me interrupt you right now. I hate to interrupt while you're talking. But, uh, I, you know, we, we helped start this contest last year. We went to the meetings and everything and I got know. it started. And uh, I'm a little offended they wouldn't go in and call me and tell yeah. me they're doing it again this year. Well, but had I known, I would have called you, but I didn't know. I thought, you know, well, you knew all about it. Well, they started yeah, earlier too. I don't know why they did that. Uh, but well, I'm a little, little surprised. They, yeah, little, you know how they are down there. I guess they don't see. think we have any viewers out there. But go ahead, tell us, give us a good report. Well, uh, 3.42 pound flounder one here at the city pier. I don't know what they've done at the county. Uh, I heard they didn't catch a pompano, and I don't know. I don't know all about it down there, but our. Kids division, a uh, six point five pound King Michael won a little girl age twelve called. She won the rod and reel. Um and then the King Michael in the adult division was sixteen point four eight pounds. Okay. And there was a Spanish Michael at four point four five pounds called. Um uh, and uh that was a good good fish, good Spanish. And there was supposedly some Mai Mai caught yesterday. I didn't see them. I just kind of heard a rumor, and I don't know if it's true or not, but, but uh, and don't know how big they were or anything. But All it, right. You know. Mahi Mahi. Yes, sir. And uh, I know the selfish have really been on a run the last week or two. Uh, are they still see them off the pier? Uh, yeah, they're out there. They've been, they've been coming around, you know. Caught one last week, that guy did. Now, now, tell me again, who who exactly is running the contest? Uh, it's the t 
Tourist Development Council. The tourist Development Council. Okay. Yeah. All right. They, well, they forgot all about you. Well, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> that, that's all right. Since you're the one who got it started. Yeah, we, we did get it started. We actually went to the meeting and got it started. But, uh, yeah, that's kind that's of crazy. That's okay. Yeah, they, they're concerned with the concerts and wine and cheese uh, festival. So, anyway, uh, we'll, we'll try to help you all you can, folks, to uh, go fish. Yeah, let tournament. them know because I, I, just, I just assume they, they, you know, talked to you and they moved it yeah. up. You're, you the first one, you're the first one to tell us about it. Well, anyway, uh, keep us informed on it, okay? Okay, come see us. Thank you, Kerry. Panama City Beach Pier, brought to us by Bugaway Pest Control. Let's take this break. We'll be right back. Bill Kramer's Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC is Panama City's exclusive full-line dealership. Built on a 45-year foundation of trust and total customer satisfaction in all departments including our huge pre-owned department, where we'll pay top dollar for your current automobile as a trade-in, or we'll place your vehicle on our lot and help you sell it. At Bill Kramer Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC. Four decades, three generations, one tradition. City living is simply better without glasses. The Eye Center of North Florida offers the most advanced cataract surgery using lifestyle lens implants, which allow you to see all distances glasses free. Our surgeons perform this quick and painless procedure at our accredited surgery center. When it comes to your vision, trust your local experts in surgical eye care. The Eye Center of North Florida. We are so lucky to live in North Florida. We have some of the best fresh and saltwater fishing in the world. My biggest problem is not catching fish, but trying to decide what kind of fish I want to catch. No matter what I'm after, I always stop at Sunjammers Water Sports first. They have just what I need, rods and reels, line, tackle, and most important, fly bait. Yes, sir, we sure are lucky. Hi, I'm Paul Flagg with Professional Fiberglass and Marine Service. We offer all types of boat repair, fiberglass work, bottom painting, detailing, buffing. If your gel coat's looking dull, we can get that boat looking good for you again. We also offer a pickup and delivery service, and we have trailers that you can use if we are going to work on your boat, and we can come and get your boat for you. We can be reached at 850-960-9054, or you can reach us on the web at ProFiberglassMarine.com. All right, welcome back. This past weekend was the opening weekend of early duck season. I always have a barometer. I go by, I, I can hear the shots at Deer Point Lake. I talk about this every year. And, you know, some years it sound like the Battle of the Bulls, and some years you don't hear a whole lot. Well, this is one of those years I didn't hear a whole lot. That opening uh, volley uh, around, you know, a little bit after daybreak and uh, at legal shooting hours, I heard a few shots and, uh, in two or three different places. But uh, after that, didn't hear anything. I know. Uh, which is a sign there's not really a lot of ducks moving right now. But be aware the season uh, runs September 24th through the 28th. So still get a chance to do it. duck hunting. I used to do a lot of it. It's a whole lot of fun. Uh, two ways to do it. You can get out in these big lakes like Seminole and Talquin and, and uh, Deer Point and set up a duck blind and set up your decoys. I've done it that way. The favorite way, though, is these river swamps along the Apalachicola, Choctaw River swamps. Get, get up in these sloughs and and find these wood ducks and uh, shooting them during the legal hours. They're a lot of fun, and the teal and wood ducks are open now. And we'll talk about goose hunting later. There's a lot of there's geese all over Florida, and uh, the season, is, the regular duck season now is going to open. There, I was asked about that. Regular season is going to open November 19th through 27th. That's that Thanksgiving week, and then again December the 10th, all the way to the end of January. So that's a regular duck season. So be aware of that. Uh, a lot of fun to do those kind of. Th things with them and they'll have a youth waterfowl hunt too later at the end of the season and we'll talk more about that uh, i have a picture here of my final my last golfing trip uh, this is my trip number 11 this year uh this is just a couple of this see uh that's way on far right of chris martello he's a basketball coach at mosley that's uh maddie there acting like a monkey and then i'm in the background casey uh she just just graduated from university of florida casey cottrell and then my uh, my other granddaughter uh, Mackenzie, and out of that picture, my wife is back there somewhere, and then Sue Cottrell took the picture and sent it to me last night. They joined us on our final scalloping trip. It was a lot of fun, folks. There were, there were a lot of people out there. I mean, Saturday, it went out with a bang. It has been a, a great season. I know you're tired of hearing me talk about it, but what a great season of scalloping. And we had, 
we fed, had all the family over yesterday, fed about 12 folks on, on those scallops we got Saturday and, and uh, didn't have any scallops. We, did, we have four scallops left, but they were hid up under the paper towel. But uh, they, my whole family loves those scallops, and we fried them up yesterday. Had a great time. Okay, uh, fox squirrel. We talked about, uh, you know, be, just being a, a naturalist and knowing where things are and getting the young people involved. The state is trying to actually uh, identify the state, FWC, when I'm talking about state, FWC doesn't have a great handle on where the fox squirrels are and they're asking for your input on it. And, and uh, excuse my rudimentary map, map of Florida. I tell my students I'm blessed with a lot of things, but drawing is not one of them. But uh, yeah, you get an idea, there's three different uh, species of, of fox squirrels in Florida. In top right hand corner in northeast Florida is Sherman fox squirrel. Down here in the southwest is Big Cypress. And up here in the Panhandle, we have the southeastern fox squirrel. And if you have any sightings or see any, I know we have them at a golf course, uh, just go, go online. All you got to do is go online or, or get your kids to go online and say, hey, we, seen some, we have seen some fox squirrels in this area here. And they're putting all this data together. And they're going to have a lot better handle on all the fox squirrels where they are. And they are protected, by the way. So uh, that public input will be a lot of help to them. All right? Now, last week also had a... Picture, Ed, Edsel Swearingen was at the, uh, at the back door when I went out of the show last week. He w wanted to show me his bass boat he's wanting to sell. And folks, this is one of the best looking used boats I've ever seen. I'll be honest with you. It looked like it uh, came off the showroom floor. He's, kept, he's always kept a garage. Here's the deal on it, 15 and a half foot Ranger bass boat, which is a smaller boat, which a lot of people like. 90 horsepower, Mariner motor, a new trolling motor by Minn Kota, used very little. It is seriously in excellent condition. If you want $7,500 for it, that's Edsel Swearingen. His phone number is 785-4932. And that is a fine looking boat. If you want one of the smaller bass boats, it's real stable. Okay? All right, let's take our next break and we'll be right back. Captain's Cove Marina, designed with fishermen in mind. Easy access to the best fishing along Florida's forgotten coast. Deep sea fishing, fly fishing from a kayak, cruising endless miles of bayous, bays, and the intercoastal waterway. Count on the captain's crew to work hard to make your day on the water the best ever. Captain's Cove Marina, 1617 Grouper Avenue, Port St. Joe, 850-227-3357. Harold Milling Company, rough and tough dog food. Harold Milling Company builds it. They build hog feed. They build dairy feed. They make chicken feed. They have specialty feed for rabbits. If you got a worm farm, grandmother used to have a worm farm. Look at the Harold Milling Company. You want to go down and get your, <clears throat> the dog's not running anymore. It's all over with. You want to get that 16% uh, and drop down from the 26% protein. You don't want over over to get fat. Harold Milling Company, you can buy it almost any feed store in the Panama City area. Come on down to Blue Water Outrigger, where you'll always find friendly service, fresh and saltwater fishing rods. Top of the line, men's and women's apparel. Don't forget to pick up your live baits and let us help you with all your outdoor needs. Check out our wide selection of top quality reels and hunting necessities and everything in between. Come see us or order online. We'll be waiting for you right next door to Piggly Wiggly, Port St. Joe. Panama City Beach is known as one of the top dive destinations in Florida. Divers Den offers daily dive charters that can accommodate up to 13 divers. Our boat captain is U.S. Coast Guard certified and a paddy dive instructor. We have trained professionals who offer a variety of scuba certifications. Come see us at our two locations on Thomas Drive and Tyndall Parkway. Welcome back. You want to check this out, folks. This is an email. Uh, first of all, let me read it to you. Hey, Winston, I love the show. Wanted to send you a picture of what I caught uh, uh, this past Wednesday. I'm not sure how big it was. Check it out, folks. Kayak fishing at Luka here at a sailfish. I'm not sure how big it was. I got a couple of uh, jumps from it, the pictures. I released it to make someone else's uh, day. It was a thrill and the biggest fish I've ever caught from my kayak. Uh, good job. This is Sean Pittman. That is a nice, it is a calm day out there, isn't it? Okay, an ocean kayak. Sean, got your name right here. I'm going to go ahead and enter and fold this over. I'm going to go ahead and put your name in the pot for the contest, and, uh, and thank you for sending that picture. That's a great shot. I also have one more picture. 
I'm telling you now, we said last week well, on our fishing report, if you looked at it, sell fish were all over from Panama City Beach Pier out toward Phillips Inlet area, and these kayakers uh, got word really quick, and they got out there. Here's, here's another picture right here. This is Sam Patrick with the Panama City Kayak Fishing Association with another sailfish there. Good job. And beautiful weather out there. Okay. I want to say good morning to Mr. Clifford Pitts. I saw him uh, Friday night up at a Blunstown uh, football game, and it was, it was a great night up there. He's a World War II veteran, and, and uh, I had a nice talk with him. We watched his show every morning, and he loves the freshwater fish down in Dead Lakes, and I was asking him if the fish been biting. He'd gone like Wednesday of last week and had a great day fishing. Went back the next day, same spots, and didn't catch any. Uh, now, isn't that a typical fishing story? But uh, nice talking to him. Also got to see Ellis Nichols and Davis Pitts. Uh, David Pitts, some of the older guys used to coach there. It's good seeing everybody up there in the area and uh, enjoyed watching the ball game. All right. Now, we talked uh, uh, last weekend, week before, really about some floundering lights and, and uh, how, to, how to set up a floundering season. We're right on the edge of the season. So uh, I did a little video uh, yesterday. on uh, This is on my floundering light. It's a homemade job now. You can't buy it. Uh, if I tried to sell it, I don't think anybody would buy it, but it's just something that's worked for me for years. So uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at this video here. Uh, this is another in a series of floundering lights. You know, we talked about, uh, about buying new floundering lights already rigged up and all, but I've always sort of enjoyed enjoy doing things myself and making things. So uh, I made my own floundering light years ago. I hate to say how old this floundering light is, but I want to show it to you. And, it's been very practical. It's been it's worked great. I just want to show you how I made it, and uh, maybe you might be inspired by it, or you might be even laughing at it. But it, this is okay. I'm gonna start down here first of all with the bulb. This is the old time, old fashioned thousand loom bulb. They don't make these anymore, but man, this has been a good one. Of course, then I epoxied it all up, got it all. Make sure you know it's gonna get water in it. But this has been like this for years now. My wires run through here. Now my floater. Folks, my dad always told me just make do with what you have. And what I had was this lid on a ice chest. So it sits here like that, and this is lid on a five-gallon bucket to help to stop the glare from coming up in my face. You can see this is some old fencing material I had left over from my old PVC fencing job I did. So you can see I don't have a lot of money. I always use stainless on it. I didn't on my on my hinge right here. I might need to replace it this year, but I said that's uh, that wouldn't be in the trouble. Okay, so now you see, okay, you see how it's going to work. It's going to float out in front of the boat, and you, what you got to have now on these on these rigs, you got to have some little bit of flexibility because at nine, at times at night you're going to sort of bounce a little bit, and you're going to go ahead and uh, and be have to be able to be flexible. Okay, so what do you have here? This hinge, that's the purpose of it. Okay, it's going to be like that. And then when I attach it to the boat right here, all right, I'm gonna have to. It's, it's hard to do out of land. It's a lot easier in water. Basically, what I have right here, you'll see. Okay, now here's the other hinge. It's double hinged. Okay. And what I basically do, I just use these big old clamps like this. I've done it all kind of ways, but this works good like this. I put a couple of clamps on it, and okay, on each side, and get it balanced out. So it's gonna sit up in the water like this right here. And it'll go back and forth in the water. I have it more toward the bow on either side. But the clamps will hold it. I've used C clamps a lot of times too. C clamps can work too. A C clamp on both sides. But use the clamps. Clamps I found out be a lot easier. Okay? Now on the plug in, you know the alligator clips and all always work good. But this year I had this done and it's gonna be a little bit a little bit uh, easier I think on me. So uh, let's let's watch this. I'm gonna turn around. I'm gonna show you how I plug it in, okay? Let me lay it up here. I went to a professional fiberglass and I asked, I asked Paul if he would help me out on this and put me a plug, a little plug in the boat, okay? A little plug right here, just like a cigarette lighter in the car, and it just plugs in. Now, all right, my battery. My battery back here. It's real convenient just plug it in and out. I plug it in when I'm floundering and when I take it out when I'm not. I'm going to plug in right here. And we'll see. You'll see uh, how simple this rig is. Uh, you got it plugged in. Of course, it don't look real bright now. 
but it puts out a thousand looms. And the most important thing now, you don't want to have the bulb lit and put it in the water because it's going to crack on you. It heats up real fast. In fact, ooh, it's already hot right now. It's been lit 10 seconds. So make sure you always have it uh, unplugged, put in the water. You always turn the light on when the bulb is in the water. That's rule number one of floundering. All right. All right, next, let's talk about the gig itself. Again, this is a homemade rig I put together. I, like I said, I enjoy doing it. Uh, the gig itself is a five-prong stainless steel. Now, you can see this is probably about 15 years old, this one is, but it, it costs a little bit, but it'll last me my lifetime. So I really, it's really strong. Then I, I got a 10-foot pole here, good, strong, sturdy pole, made, from, made it's out, out of cedar, really. And uh, what happened right here, I just started put a fiberglass cloth over it and a fiberglass two or three, three times, matter of fact, three times a fiberglass is. And so this is super strong here because this sort of stress, when you really, if you get a really big one, you're going to have some stress as you, as you push down on it. And so you want it really strong here in the joint. And also, I just went ahead and put some fiberglass on it, just sort of waterproof it a little bit. It's not uh, completely waterproof, but it's in decent shape. And on the handle, I put some fiberglass cloth here just for gripping, okay? I've got a good strong grip here, and this is a guide hand when you really push down and guide it, so you want to grip on it. So this is how I did the, my gig, and uh, been really pleased with it, real balanced, and uh, really lightweight. Okay? Now it doesn't matter if you have an old boat, like this old Carter craft here, or a new boat like my newest Panhandle Outdoors Edition. Flounder gigging is an awful lot of fun, especially on late summer and early fall. I'm Winston Chester for Panhandle Outdoors. The greatest investment we can all make is in the lives of our children and grandchildren. To help you invest for retirement, handle your IRA rollover, protect your family with life or long-term care insurance, call my dad for an appointment at his new office on Wilson Avenue behind Lowe's. And he'll give you a copy of his most recent book, Seven Steps to Serious Money. For, for free! Walter Wedrick, your serious money advisor! It's Kubota Summertime Deal Days at Soul Tractor and Kubota Finance offers are heating up. Right now we have long-term finance rates for qualified buyers. We have the deals you've been waiting for on new Kubota compact track loaders. Come take a look at our new Kubota compact track loaders and excavators today. Hurry to Soul Tractor's Kubota Summertime Deal Days and get your best deal on a new Kubota today while the sun shines. My name's Captain Rick Corley. I'm a SAMS accredited Marine Surveyor, NAM certified Marine Surveyor, and I am a certified Marine Investigator. Been surveying since 1969. Was taught by my father, who is the oldest longest practicing Marine Surveyor in the world. We do all types of survey, commercial or pleasure, steel, aluminum, fiberglass, wood, makes no difference. Give us a call at 850-527. 5287 or visit us online. We'd appreciate your business. Sunrise to sunset. A walk through nature takes you on a journey of Florida's Emerald Coast. You'll encounter the wildlife, birds, lighthouses, indigenous to the beautiful land and seascapes of Florida. Set to the sounds of nature and enhanced with easy listening music. Only $14.95 plus $4.95 shipping and handling. NatureWalkDVD.com or send check or money order to the address on the screen. A walk through nature. Visually stunning. Ah, welcome back. You can see uh, that's a homemade rig there, but uh, we're right on the uh, flounder gigging season. So uh, if you have any good pictures of some that you made up, uh, please feel free to send them to me, and we'll talk about those on the show. I still have some more in the series of floundering lights that we're doing here on the show. Uh, let's take a look at Express Lane fishing game forecast. Our peak fishing time and outdoor time for viewing today is only one time. We're looking at 1146 to 146, right in the middle of the day. Hey boss, you want a two hour lunch and uh, you're going to go uh, fishing uh, right at lunch and catch a big one. All right. Now, I got a great email last night. Uh, this was yesterday's, a picture from yesterday's fishing. This is really good. Bill Barlow sent this in. He said, hey coach, he said, uh, it was a nice day in the water. It was, it was a beautiful weekend. I know you all agree to that. Just a beautiful weekend, especially on the water. I'm fishing my, my neighbor, Phil Holloway. We fished East Bay Sunday morning. We caught several nice trout but no keepers. We did see a school of about 50 redfish, but they're all oversized. 
I ma we managed to catch two at the same time. One was a 26 and a half inch, which we kept for supper, and we re released the oversized one, and that 26 and a half inch one uh, fed, fed six people. And he said, Mother was so thick, you could almost uh, walk on them and keep up the great work on the show. Thank you so much, uh, Billy Barlow, for sending that picture. That, that is, uh, that's a nice day. You know, you don't have to catch but one big redfish, and like I say, you fed six people, and, and uh, that's special. All right, now, we have, uh, we have something coming up in about two weeks from Tuesday night. We're in a season now where we have some of our different churches all throughout the Panhandle. A lot of them will have their wild game cookout in the fall. And some, uh, like First Methodist downtown, they'll do theirs at the end of hunting season, like in February. But uh, two weeks from Tuesday night, the Wild Beast Feast will be at the uh, Highland Park Baptist Church, October 11th. That is two weeks from Tuesday night, and it is a uh, really, I went to it last year, and it was really a nice, the Highland Park Baptist, rather than 231. And I'm going to give those two tickets away tomorrow, so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it to a caller, so be watching, and we have some tickets to give away to that. I'm certainly going to be in attendance. They've asked me to, to help out. An hour before they eat, that last year, they had all kind of games and different kind of festivities, and everybody uh, was participating. I had some of my students up there, and just a lot of neat stuff. So I'm going to help out in, in, in that aspect this year, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Okay? So uh, mark that on your, on your calendar. Also, we've got several other tournaments coming up. You know, the Bottoms Up Tournament, we mentioned that. That's going to be at Mexico Beach Marina this coming weekend. And also, in two weeks from now, the big $100,000, I'm, I'm sorry, $10,000, Second annual bass tournament over here in Appalachia Gold River. We'll talk about that tomorrow too, but that's at White City. Two big tournaments coming up, and then that Elizabeth Bodoff tournament's coming up in October. This is the last week of September, and uh, you know, as always, it, it seems like the weather is always just really uh, unseasonably warm the last week of September. We we'll, should have some cool weather coming in, you know, maybe the first week of October, and that's going to get things going. I, I've seen uh, a lot of mullet out in North Bay myself. They're jumping out there. Uh, you just heard it from Billy Barlow, saw over in East Bay. A lot of mullets out there. And we're going to get our nets pretty soon and, and go catch us some. Uh, Mama hadn't told me she wanted fried mullet yet, but when that first cool snap comes, she's going to be saying, Winston, I, I sure would like some, uh, some fried mullet if you think you could catch some. So that was, my, that was always my cue to go catch her some mullet. So uh, we'll be doing that soon, I hope. Meanwhile, uh, this week, uh, y'all have a great week at work and a great week uh, with your job. And if you're retired, you have a great week uh, fishing on the golf course. And meanwhile, today, you do something good for somebody, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.